Assalamu alaikum. I have gone through few tafsirs of this wonderful surah Al Asr, and today let me try to briefly summarize this for you so that you can appreciate its beauty and magnificence. A'uzu billahi minash shaitani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Let's first consider the meaning of the word Asr. Asr means time. Asr is also the waqt or prayer time which is the busiest time if we compare it to all other prayer times. This is the time when sunlight fades away and reaches the end of the working hours that is Maghrib and Aisha waqt. So this is the time when most of us remain damn busy and this time runs out really fast. The word Asr also originates from another word Asir. This word is used in Surah Yusuf, Ayat 36. In this Surah, this word actually means squeezing out juice, which indicates that this time runs out of our hand in a manner that we cannot stop it from flowing out. While Asr means Allah swears by this time. This means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put strong emphasis on time and mentions that human being is in khusr. Khusr actually means immersed in loss and destruction. So it indicates that we are constantly losing time and along with it we are also getting immersed in continual loss getting further and further away from the true success in life. Another implication of this may be that people come and go in this world and time is such a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that watches these human beings as a constant witness. Time watches how these human beings are acting in a similar manner, doing the same mistakes over generations, wasting their valuable time in running behind money, property and women, thus losing true success of life as well. This is not even talking about the bad people who run after illegal money, gambling, illicit relationships, weapons, drugs, etc., leading an immoral lifestyle. They are criminals in any way. But this surah is actually referring to people who are leading a simple lifestyle but lost focus of the ultimate purpose of this life. There is no blame in wanting for more money, property, a beautiful wife and lots of children. But making it the sole purpose of life is the problem. However, in the next ayat with the word illa lazina which means except those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that even though by default human beings are in a state of continual loss, however, there are people, those who are falling under exception to this scenario. He subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions four things and with the combination of all of them, we can make an exception to the situation of continual loss. If anyone considers anything else like property, power, entertainment, etc. to be assets of success in life and runs towards it, even if he or she gets successful in achieving all of these things, he or she is actually still in a state of continuous loss. So the only exceptions are those people who will meet these four conditions and can save themselves from the loss and thus achieving true success in life. The first condition to get into this exception is illa lazina amanu means except those who have iman. These are the people, those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though there are six pillars of iman, but the most important of these pillars is the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another most important part of iman is believing in the day of judgment. If we truly believe in the day of judgment and the hereafter, then the minor problems like poverty and other difficulties of this world becomes tolerable. We can even resist ourselves from unethical income and illicit temptations. It is impossible to attain this position without true Iman. The word Wa means and. So it means only having Iman will not be sufficient to fall under this exception. Wa Amilu Swalihat means except those who do righteous deeds. These people will have Iman in their hearts and will do righteous deeds in their actions. Righteous deeds are not limited to action and good deeds. It also covers resistance or abstaining from doing bad deeds. Now, questions arise. What can constitute good deeds and what constitute bad deeds? 
The correct answer is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rightly decides what is good and what is bad because our sense of morality changes from person to person, time to time and place to place. What was bad in the last century might be considered good in this century and what is bad in a country might be considered to be acceptable or even good in another country and there are many of such examples for these things. Again comes wa or and. This means just doing good deeds by own self will not be sufficient. There is a mandatory requirement of collective approach in Islam. We cannot practice Islam alone, not caring for others. This means those who recommend others to do righteous deeds. It is not sufficient to do good deeds alone. We must also invite others towards the truth by encouraging them to be righteous. This means we should help them grow their Iman and advise them to do good deeds and forbid them from doing bad deeds. We must try to attain collective taqwa or consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey Him and avoid doing forbidden things. Failing to go for a collective approach will never inspire other and we will become more selfish. If we try to follow the religion alone, it will also pose the risk that the misguided people can influence and convince us again to become bad over time. Again, Wa indicates that even all of the above conditions are met, they are not enough and we need all of these four conditions to be fulfilled in order to fall under the exception. Watawasob is sabr means those who enjoin others to sabr. The word sabr is generally translated as patience, but the meaning of this word is much more wider than mere patience. It includes forbearance, endurance, steadfastness, perseverance and restraint. Therefore, if someone is tested with any calamity, we should encourage that person to have patience with sabr and expect the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by acting righteously, being resistant over forbidden things and actions, and most importantly, be able to accept the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must repeatedly remind one another that everything happens with the permission and decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes people reach us to black magicians when they get into any issue. We should advise them to attain sabr and not resort to such impermissible things. Perseverance means when things get wrong, we should still hang on and keep moving. We must help each other to develop this kind of attitude of not getting depressed and frustrated on any issue. There is a very interesting noticeable point in the surah. If a person is spending his or her time just doing nothing, he might argue that, what's the big deal? I'm just chilling. I am not even doing a sin or harming another, but according to this surah, he or she is still considered to be in a state of continual loss as well. So let's fulfill all of these conditions and reach to our ultimate goal and success in life. Now let us try to examine the role of the shayateen in regard to this surah. The evil genes strive to mislead more and more people to the ultimate loss by leading them to Jahannam or the hellfire. Shayateen is the plural form of shaitan jinn. So, in this scenario, they will try to do these four things. Primarily, they will try to destroy our Iman. If they fail to corrupt our Iman, then they will try to convince us to start believing that as long as we have Iman, we have nothing to be worried about. Thus, they will resist us from acting righteously. If they fail in destroying our belief and righteousness, then they will try to make us more selfish to carry on doing good deeds by ourselves. But for the other people, we do not care to convince, encourage and support them. When they fail in all of the above attempts, then finally they will try to waste our time. They will then just want us to spend our time simply by chilling out and doing nothing. Shaitan will whisper in our minds that, at least I am not doing anything wrong. This is simply another trap of the shayateen. They cause us to neglect the value of time, but on the contrary, this surah reminds us to realize the importance of time. So, at first they will try to destroy our iman and amal, and then they will try to prevent the message of the truth from getting spread, and also try to prevent us from supporting one another to stick to the path of the truth. 
and if they fail on all of these attempts, finally they will try to kill our valuable and precious time. Thank you. Hope you like this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Thanks.